Hi there, this is Kathy Crow at the Crow Cottage. And it is a beautiful day, sort of. It was a beautiful day, and then I just noticed as I was saying that, that it's changed, it's not. <laughs> There's clouds and it, our sun is gone. I was busy and didn't notice that the sun had just disappeared on me. It was really a beautiful sunny morning. Jeff and I went out and had yeah, coffee and it was really nice, and sort of, sorry about it, that. Um, I'm, that's gonna happen again. I've got to yeah, get my coffee. And it's oh, really it's nice. so loud. It's really loud. It, like seriously loud. Oh man, that was bad. There's just no way I can avoid it. I have to do that in order to get my um, Facebook going on on the side over here so that I can see comments. Hopefully somebody will join me. We'll see. And I, um, I, every time I click live chat community standards comes up and i think i have to click that i don't know i've clicked it it's like so many times i don't know if it changes or not but at any rate um so today um, is the beginning of spring break for springfield school so jeff is home although he is away right now oh that was loud um that just means that my scan is gone. For some reason, it won't scan to my printer as though I would need that, but anyway. So he is out and about. He'll be back later. And the project that I wanna do today might take some time. I don't know, he's always so funny. He never has any idea how long it takes me to do this. So sometimes he comes home, it's only been an hour and a half and I've you know, finish like five, 10 minutes before I'll say, I just got done. And he's like, really? That takes so long. It's like, yeah, I know. It's amazing. You keep saying the same thing. Today, um, Paradise Palms. I'm going to try that one. This one's really nice. So I'm only using the trees. I'm not really doing much with it. Uh, mainly, I wanted to show you how I am doing Rainbow of Happiness. Now, there's lots of ways to do this. And I've seen some really nice samples out there. So go ahead and check out all the different samples. But I kind of cheated on this one because I'm not a big uh, multicolored card fan. Uh, sometimes that's something I like, but very rarely, very rarely. It's more like a kid's kind of card for me. Um, I like more subtle colors and pastels and whatnot. You can kind of tell even by what I'm wearing, what colors I like. So I am cheating and I am going with the um, designer series paper that we have available called New Horizons. Now, isn't that gorgeous? This is just one sheet of many. And the back sides are just as pretty, but the, the back sides are like a watercolor paint pour sort of deal. But the fronts are too, but they actually have some, it, it, I don't know, what is it, Rorschach stuff? It's to me, um, landscapes. Most of them have, to me, what look like a sort of a landscape started. And they're a really nice, almost Monet kind of background, I think. And I've seen some people who've used them that way. There are so many nice cards out with this. If you don't have this DSP yet, you've got to get it. It's only 11 or 12 bucks and in the US and um, you're gonna use every sheet. As soon as I, I, I ordered one copy right away when it was available, but when I got it, I quickly ordered another, another pack at least, and I might even have ordered two, just because it's the kind I will wanna keep making over and over and over again. Do you remember First Frost when it came out a couple of years ago? And, and, um, and that actually might be in this new catalog for Christmas too, I don't know, because I think they ordered a bunch, because we all ordered it and it ran out and then we couldn't get it and it was bad. So, <laughs> like when there's a really good paper, we all order a bunch of it because we know we're gonna be using it for years and years. This is one of those. This is one of those, um, good, it's only one o'clock. You only had to listen to one chime. Um, this is one of those papers you will use for years and years and years, I guarantee you, because the colors too are muted enough that they will be able to go with any color scheme that Stampin' Up! comes up. When we do new colors, remember, there will be a new in color set on, um, Oh, on, um, you know, sometime in June or July. I'm not sure when the new catalog is coming out. Usually it comes out in June. And, um, and there will be a whole new set of in colors. But I guarantee you that some of them are going to go with this New Horizons because it's just such beautiful paper. 
All right, so I wanted to show you how I'm doing the um, rainbow. So let's get started because it was trickier than I expected. I, I really did not think that I was gonna have any trouble stamping what seems to be a very simple shape, rainbows. Um, then, uh, because it's a it's a step by step stamp thing, it's not just one stamp, you know, for the rainbow. Excuse my cord here. Let me see if I can loop it so that it's not hanging quite so much in to the frame. Um, and then let me adjust my paper here. Hopefully, my lighting is good. I always kind of have to check everything to see because it doesn't always want to cooperate now that is next week's next week's I'm just going to give you a little preview of what I'm going to do next week because next week I want to do this waterfall card it turned out really nice and um, if you are a follower on Pinterest um, could you please like this this is actually a really good one and share it uh, I want to do this one waterfall is not a new technique it's been around for a long time but I have seen it going up and down a lot but Someone did a side-to-side -side one like this, and I thought, ooh, that wave with a bird flying. Now, this bird is not our soaring swallow. He was a little too big, so I got out a retired flowing fountain for that. But anyway, that is next week's project. So please like and share my page. I would really appreciate it. Okay, now, that cord is still really dangling here. Let's see, what can I do to get you out? Let's see if that took you took you away. All right, so why are we crooked? Let's see if I can get you a little straighter here on <laughs> and then not have the cord dangling too. All right, well, if it is a little crooked, I'm terribly sorry. That's sort of the way life is for me, crooked, I guess. <clears throat> not really. Now the colors I used, Mm, what are the colors I use? This looks like Flirty Flamingo back here, or no, actually it looks like Calypso Coral because this is Flirty Flamingo. <clears throat> All right, so I took out my DSP for each sheet that I used, you know, for this. Although that one looks slightly different, doesn't it? Because this one has the blue on it. I thought it was this one and it's not. Let me see if I got them mixed up because at some point it fell off of my my where I had it yeah this one actually goes with this one <laughs> yes and I have it tipped this way for this card okay so if you have this paper and you're wanting to figure out exactly how I did it let, I'm showing you right now this is this sheet and I have this kind of blue trees up on the horizon that's going up and this is the sky this is water Okay, so that one's going with that one. We're gonna do all of these. It doesn't take very long when you have this DSP. This obviously is the one with the grass. This is an obvious one, but look at that pink horizon sky sort of thing. It's so pretty. That one goes with that one. And then one more. I think I did four, but I am just doing three. Maybe I did do just three, but I thought I did four. Now this is not with this one at all, so I am gonna grab I am gonna go grab my um, my packets. I have enough. I know I can find that sheet. Where are you? Hori um, New Horizons, it's called. New Horizons. You're gonna really like this one. It's gonna be sweet. This is my favorite one right here on top. All right, so. It's not, it could be that one, but I, I wanted, I needed all the ones that would show me a fairly light background for my sky, um, since we're doing rainbows on here. So let's find the one that I did. Now it's gonna be a little bit confusing for me because I might have just used this and inked it up. I bet I did, yes I did. I did use this and I just inked up the blue to make the, the water part of it. Ah, it was really warm outside and I don't know what the temperature is right now, but it was 
cool-ish, but still for what we had had, it had been really cold, so it felt warm to me. Now I'm making these big and square. They would have to go in an envelope that was like a half sheet, you know, envelope, which you can still send uh, for regular postage price, as long as it, uh, these, um, you know, these pop-up things aren't too pop-up-y. And uh, we're, let's start with this one. This one's gonna be the most ink on it, I believe. So we'll go ahead and get this one going first. I'm gonna put in the sky, I mean the water, and I'm gonna try balmy blue, but I bet you I needed my other ones. It's pretty dark and I don't wanna just, just spend a ton of time sponging here. Now I made the ground and you can use your Paradise Palms kind of textury sand thing to do the ground here so that our palm trees have something to stand on. But, so you don't want to get your blue down into that. The pink is kind of nice. It's it's a nice reflection for your, your rainbow up top. So let's do that water first. What you need are these blending brushes. They are so nice. So I got that out. But let's do the sky here. Now, ooh, I forgot. I better check out my measurements because I don't want to be doing too much. I bet I don't need to. It looks like I'm going to cut off. I bet you I'm going to cut off about an inch. So I'm not even going to worry about that too much. Let's just do, let's try balmy blue and see what it looks like here. Yeah, that's too slow. I don't have enough time to do that. If I was, you know, working all on my own here, that would be fine. But let's do Misty Moonlight for the sky. And then always start off on your paper so that you don't get a big glob of blue right on the edge there. It's going to come off anyway. You're not going to keep, you know, a lot of that. Now, I don't want to go into this part where the rainbow is going to be. So I'm just doing those corners for the sky. All right, that's it. And now we'll just stick with this same color and we're gonna do the water down here. We wanna uh, get this pretty dark. So I'm gonna just go right on the paper here and not go off the edge because I need this to be pretty dark anyway. I, in fact, I can see right now, I'm gonna need to bring in this Knight of Navy. That is so dark. Let's go on the side just to make sure I don't get too carried away there. Ah, that's looking good. Okay, now when you come to the top, you want to go on the edge here more because I don't really want to get into my horizon too much, but I do want blue all along that top. Okay, let's turn it. There we go. Now it can, it, the shoreline can be lighter in color. So if you end up, you know, just doing circles like this and you feel like you can't get too close or it'll be getting into the sky, don't worry about it. And then like here, if there's variations in the water, that's a good thing. You you actually don't, that that's gonna give you depth in your, your ocean here, so. That is not an issue. All right, so now we have what looks more watery, doesn't it? And I'm gonna set that aside. If I was, you know, just fooling around with myself here though. I would be cleaning that off right away. All right, so now we'll start on the rainbow itself. Now, you've got four rows. As you can see, I've got one, two, three, four, five. So I wanna show you how I did that. I experimented with these a little just to see how it was best to get these different colors. And I quickly realized I kind of like it messy anyway. I don't like a clean, cause it's gonna be going into other colors. So you're gonna see how I did that. Um, you can just kind of double stamp over and, and it, 
and it just sort of works. You don't really have to be very good at this. <laughs> I was, when I first used it and I was really careful, I was thinking, oh no, this, this stamp set is actually much more of a problematic than I thought it would be. And it's going to be difficult for people to use who aren't comfortable. I'm starting with the outside first. And you want to go down into this water. I'm not doing a, a reflection. I did a card. Um, I, don't, I don't have it here handy. But that did a reflection. And this one actually would would work to do a reflection but when i finished with it i wasn't all that thrilled with the reflection anyway it's a little too perfect so um we're not doing a reflection but i here are my colors that i've used i am using polished pink and i am using a pineapple punch which is retired but i needed a I needed a more yellow than our other ones. And I am using a pool party, it looks like. Not that one. Where are you? Uh, maybe pool party, although my other blues look like balmy blue. So actually, I think we'll go with balmy blue. That's going to match up better. And then... I originally I used um, Highland Heather, but I think I'm going to use Gorgeous Grape this time and just stamp off on the side here a lot, okay? I'm using a stamp off method for the first rainbow, the outside rim, and then a solid polished pink for the inside. So we're going to go with a stamped off, stamp it off, and I'm going to test this and stamp off again because even that one's pretty strong. And I'm gonna just go ahead and do this one right here. Let me see, where do I want this? Yeah, it can be right here. Um, we're gonna see, that's pretty good. I like that it's very, very pale. Now we're gonna do another one, stamped off twice again. I'm gonna do it just a little further down, and then you get it, uh, There's there's this, you know, duplicate effect there, which I'm liking, okay? But I'm not doing it any, um, I'm not doing that. I'm gonna do it actually one more time darker because I want it to go pink to red. In your rainbow, normally you would go pink, red, and orange, and we're kind of skipping orange, but we're gonna do just a solid pink now, okay? So I'm just kind of hitting below a little so you're still seeing those colors come down. Yeah, I don't really want it going into the water so much, so I'm going to take off those edges right there. All right, now we've got a really strong, really strong. That's my red. I'm calling it red. It's pink, but I'm calling it red. All right, and now we're gonna go to the next level. So we're done with this largest one, and we're gonna go to the next one. And this one's gonna be yellow. So I'm gonna, I could use Daffodil Delight, but um, I didn't like Daffodil Delight. It was a little bit muddied. Just a little bit too much gray or brown tone in it. So I'm going with our retired pineapple punch. I'm really hoping that Stampin' Up! will come up with a clear yellow that they keep in our regular assortment of colors. Our, like, um, should be in the brights. We should have pineapple punch in the brights. All right, stamping that off. I don't want it to be too, too bright. This is the next one, isn't it? Okay, it is. Um... I'm gonna, I can see it's not the same arc. I don't know if I stretched it when I was doing The thing is that these are very stretchable, which is kind of nice. Okay, so you can kind of stretch it out. If you've, if you like me, you've used these a bit, you might have messed up your arc a little bit. Now let's see. Yeah, that's better. So we'll try that again. I might just go ahead and stick with it, the solid color, but I'm gonna go partially into my, my polished pink so um, I can get some orange in there. That'll give me some orange. 
Okay, see, you got just a little bit of orange going in there. And if you don't like that there's no top to it, just come down and kind of just stamp just that top part with your finger underneath, just getting a little bit right there. Okay, now we've got that. And we can go on to the next level. The next level is going to be blue. I think I'm using balmy blue. Okay, so I'm sticking that one on there. Here's the next one. You can see I've used these quite a bit. They're kind of starting to slide off. I'm going to have to clean that up. Okay, so here again, you can see I've kind of messed up my arc. So I'm just making it stick to my paper in the shape I want it. Oops, got to do it the other way though. Okay, so just stick it to the paper the way you want that shape. If yours has gotten off at all, like mine has. And then press your block on it. it these photopolymers are so forgiving. You can do lots of things with them, and you can kind of change, alter their shape a little, and I love that. So now when you mix your blue with your yellow, you're going to get some green, which is the next color in your rainbow. It's pink, red orange, yellow, green, and then blue, and then purple. That's the order of your rainbow. So we're actually getting the real order in. It's just you know, with slightly different colors. These are not what you would see in nature. And I want that stamped off probably two times. I'm doing it two times just to be on the safe side. Nope, that was too much. So we'll do it again, and we'll just stamp it off once. And my rainbow sort of left me. I'm going to just do one side and the other side with my hand underneath there trying to, there we go, I'm trying to get a little green going there. Stamp that off right at the top. If I get into my yellow, it'll give me just a little green. I wasn't all that successful with it, but I'm going to stay with that because I don't want it to get any more blue. And I'm going to do purple so it will cover up that tiny little spot there. All right, now you're going to see how um, I'm going to do the same thing with this arc. Spread it out. It's a little harder with this smaller one because it's so small. <laughs> It's actually not even going to work. I'm going to have to do it on my block and just hope I'm getting a accurate spread here. Good. That's pretty close. As you can see, you can kind of keep going. If you are... Do Hi, Linda. It's nice to see you. I. It's easier to... Um, if you're going with really light colors, you can kind of keep stamping that rainbow until you like what you see. This is very dark purple, so you want to go off at least three times here before you stamp that initial one. I'm going right in the center. I know I'm going to have to make it bigger, but I want to see how that worked. Let's go one, two, and do it one more time. There we go. Now I've got that. And then we're going to go, uh, let's go one, two, three. Kind of got a little mess going here on the side of my block. And I'm going to pick up my paper and put my finger right over here because I want to go on the side a bit and on the top and on this side just to kind of get some of that in. Uh, now I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to show you what I'm going to do to kind of fix this because it's going to, I could use the next size up, but I'm afraid that won't work. So instead, I'm just going to take half of my rainbow two, three, and let's get that little extra out. Mm, there we go. Now I'm kind of filling in that area there. And I'm going to get my blue and come back in there too. And now I'm going to get this other side. Let me clean that. So you see what I mean? I mean, this looks like it's going to be a really simple process to do these rainbows, but it ended up being two, three. It ended up being just a little bit trickier than I expected. I'm kind of doing this just so that I don't have like a super solid line. Just a straight line. That'll help prevent this looking too phony baloney. 
All right, there we go. Oops, I missed up there. Uh -huh. I'll have to fix that. All right, so now we'll get our blue back again and fix this base part. I'm not real happy with how that's turned out there. I might want to go back for my other ones and use, um, instead of Gorgeous Grape, use Highland Heather. It's a little easier to manage. All right, so we'll do this again. This time, though, we are doing Balmy Blue back again. Let me close this up and I'm gonna put you away. You're just, Gorgeous Grape is good for quick, 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 cause it's so dark, but we better stick with Highland Heather. It's not gonna, not working for me to have. All right. I'll just stamp off once there. And one more time, stamping off once, and then just going into that purple to try to ease that out. Okay, so now our rainbow is done. And I wanna do uh, the sentiment right over it. And to do that, because I kinda of stretched my arc out a little bit, you're gonna to have to stretch those words out too to make them fit. But that's one. This is one of the reasons I bought this set, is because of this which says sending you a rainbow of happiness, but it's in that rainbow shape. I know other people who've been doing Stampin' Up! a long time probably have rainbow sentiments, but you might not have curved ones, and you might have rainbow um, arcs even, but I didn't. This is the first rainbow set I've ever bought. Okay, so I am gonna take this and push this down here at the side trying to get it to fit more what my rainbow actually is. It's kind of having, it's stretched out, so it's not cooperating too much. <laughs> I'm gonna have to adjust that. All right, but I can kind of see what I'm doing. So now once it's stuck on your block, you can pick it up and you can spread it out a little bit and then check and see. That's pretty close. I don't think I need to do it too much more. You don't want to mess up your arc too much. And then this color is um, looking like gorgeous grape. So I am going to have to grab that back out again. But we will put the sentiment on. It's dark enough that it'll stand right out there. Isn't that cute? Now I did this one as a retirement card. Oh, no, I didn't. Actually, I just used the wrong color because I was trying to do this one. I did this one as a happy birthday. So we'll we'll stick with happy birthday, although I did do the wrong color on there. <laughs> oh, well. That's such is life. Maybe we'll just do a different mat for this one so that it doesn't... So it works out. Did you guys uh, realize that there is a sale on the, the die cut machine and this is a really good time to be buying your, your die cuts if you need a die cut machine for any one. I don't have a birthday one in this one, but we do have a little something to brighten your day, but that's, I, don't, I need something very small to fit in here. Let's go with the tiny, tiny little thank you that came with this. I haven't used that yet. So we'll just do the tiny, tiny little thank you right in there. Oh, I love it. It fits in there so perfectly, doesn't it? Nice. All right, so now that is that. And then what we are gonna do is trim it down and we will do um, the palm trees. I'm gonna assemble all the palm trees at the same time and get them all going. So um, let's just do the ground that this is go going to go on and trim it. I better at least trim it to the size I want. So um, let me grab my board. Because this is an odd sized card, uh, first of all, I'm gonna need to trim this as close as possible to those words. Okay, that's as close as I can get because I want to make it as small as I can. And I don't want it, I do want this side to be cut off about, let's try to get it to five and a half anyway. Okay, and if it's that's five and a half, 
then we really want this to be four and a half, but that's gonna be too small. So I'm bumping it up to four and three quarters. You probably can't see that because actually that's gonna be too, I'm gonna go on up to five. Let's turn the board so you can see my measurements because they're at the bottom right now. Okay, so we'll put it at the five. That's still not quite, we're gonna go five and a quarter. Cause I'm trying, I need to get some of this lighter stuff here. So five, I didn't really wanna go five and a half by five and a half, but it's looking like I might almost have to do that. Let's go five and three eighths. <laughs> that will ease my conscience a little bit. Just, I don't really like square cards particularly. If you do a square card though, and it's not too big, again, don't put it in a square envelope. If you put it in, well, hi, Michelle, it's a treat to see you. Thanks for joining me. You're, you, if you have it in a square envelope, you're gonna call, the ch post office is gonna charge you more to mail it. If you have it in one of those large half size, you know, half of a sheet size envelope, it does not cost more. So just for you to know. Now on um, this one, I had it in pink, but this one that I did, I didn't do my pink like I should have, did purple. So I'm thinking I might need to use a different mat. And before I get too carried away, let me let me look here and see what cardstock I move. I have to move my cardstock around because my craft room here is so sunny that it was fading my cardstock and I had to move it away from my desk. So let's see if I'm gonna like purple with this. I don't really like it as well, but it's gonna have to be because that's gonna match with this better. Let me look at a piece of dirty flamingo and see. Hmm, actually that's not bad. Let's go, let's stick with flirty flamingo. It's the color I like. Okay, now we'll put in the ground. We can see we're gonna want the ground here and here for the palm trees. And you're gonna just use some cinnamon cider and your ground piece here. Hi, Andy. It's so good to see you. Yes, happy Monday. It is a nice, it was a really nice day, spring break. So Jeff is home, or was, he's gone right at the moment, but he's home. And we went and exercised, we went and got our coffee, and uh, we really needed to exercise because we are leaving and going to Cape Girardeau um, for some of this week, because it's spring break here. Uh, you're gonna just keep putting this in and make it nice and dark like uh, a beach. Okay, just keep doing it until you like what you see. Y y it's fine to have some waviness to it. You know, it's, it's sand, right? So that's this part. And now you're gonna have just a little bar sticking up here. For your other little clump of of palm trees to be sticking on. So just keep going until you get your edge the way you want it. I'm gonna actually turn it over because that's starting to look a little too, just so that I can try to get my edge a little better there. Okay, now we'll try one more time here. There, okay. All right, that's all I need to do. Yeah, you can go on and on. You can make it as light or dark as you want, but that's, uh, I actually made it lighter here and that was fine too, but it doesn't really matter. All right, I'm setting this aside for now. We will finish all the trees in one go. So we'll get on to the next rainbow. You can see me try this one again. So for this one, it's the same principle, same colors. So you're just gonna pick on your horizon where you want your rainbow to go. And I decided the way I was gonna, I wanted all my trees on one side. So I, I knew right off I was gonna have to push my rainbow all the way over here to this edge. Because I only wanna put in 
this this much ground. So let's start with that rainbow and get it in. You like the purple, Linda? You like the gorgeous grape with that better than the the flirty flamingo? I'm a, I think I love purple, but I think I've become a real pink fan. Pink has become a especially with that polished pink. I really love the polished pink. So we will start with that with a big one first. Okay. And um, this one, I might have even used some Mango Melody instead of Pineapple. I'm not sure. But anyhow, we'll just start with this. Again, you're going to stamp off two times so that it's not too dark. And in fact, yeah, two times is good. I test it always up here just to see because, yeah. All right, so now because this is blue, I don't have to really worry quite so much about how far I'm coming down into the horizon. It's not going to... If you don't like how crisp that is, then just go again over it, um, outside of it a little bit. And then you can get it to sort of soften up a little bit out there. Okay, so you can get it just a little softer. If that's, if you're getting an edge on there like I just did, you can take your, um, oh, let's look, your little watercolor pen. Let me get it started here. There we go, just a little, you know, you don't want a lot. And then you can, you can get that, you can smooth that out if that's driving you nuts. <laughs> there you go. And then that, you could do that all the way. If, if for some reason this, this sharp line here was just like, oh, it's too, too, too sharp. You can do this. Just be careful. You don't want to get this too terribly wet. That would be the only problem with adding a lot of water here because we're not done stamping for one thing. But I, I am surprised. I didn't, I wasn't having that issue. Why is my water not coming out? There's lots of it in there. So that seems really weird to me. My aqua painter is not, not cooperating. Hmm. Weird. I'd have more luck right now with a brush, dipping the brush in water on my desk. It's just not, I'm gonna have to work on that. I'm not sure. It's been sitting there just doing nothing for a long time. I have another one. Let's try the other one. See if it's cooperating anymore. Ha, huh, that one is. Yeah, that one's perfect. I don't know why that other one's not doing it. Okay, so I'm just doing this just to soften up those lines that sort of appeared. I don't know why they did. Okay, there we go. I'm going to keep you out. I might need you. All right, now we're going to do... Um, oh, that's right. I still am not done. I put polished pink away, but we're not done. Andy, you're a pink girl, too. <laughs> yeah, I really like the pink. Um, maybe it's just because I have so much on the edge here. If I clean it, do you think that'll help? Maybe. Let's try it. And then not maybe jam it down so hard. Let's just do it, like, gentle. Okay. There we go. Of course, it's a dark, the dark one, you know, so... <laughs> Okay, now that now that's not light dark enough out there. I'm gonna have to do it again, and it's kind of wet there too. And look, I can even see the dark edge. That is so bizarre. So we just got rid of it. Okay, there we go. I'm still pulling some dark stuff in there. Oh, well, I'm going to live with that. And now we're going to go to yellow. But let's do Mango Melody and see, see what that looks like. Instead of my pineapple punch, we'll go with 
flamingo melody. Today's a perfect day for a rainbow for me because it's gotten really cloudy. It was a beautiful day, sunny. Thought it was going to be sunny all day. I didn't really look at the, you know, weather report though, so it's possible that they told us it was going to do this, but I thought it was going to be sunny all day. My mango melody is acting up. I'm, I've inked it and inked it, and it's looking really weird. So I need a new mango melody pad. It's not inking properly, and it's inking weirdly. So I, I'm, I'm a little worried about how this is going to work. We're going to see. I keep forgetting to order that, but I've got to order a new pad. So I'm just wasting ink pouring it onto a pad that's for some reason ruined. I don't know why or how and it's even hard it's not soft at all anymore <laughs> like they are like it came all right and see how light it is i poured so much ink into this center to get it to ink no you know evenly and it's just refusing it's um some there's something wrong with this pad All right, so I'm gonna stamp off and go right in there. Try to get, I'm gonna go darker on one side. Again, I'm gonna kind of put my finger on there so that I can get some orange going in there. We'll ink it just on this one side. Like that. There we go. All right, this actually worked pretty good. I still am partial to my, mm, let's do our sun while we're here, to pineapple punch. I like pineapple punch. Okay, the sun's gonna have to be really close to the top. kind of need my trees to be here to know <laughs> where they're going because I can't have this too high. So we'll just stick it there and hope for the best. I'm not really sure if that's where it's going to end up having to be, but we'll see. All right, now um, back to our blue. You're probably really tired of watching me do this, but I would have been helped if I had watched this. So I... I don't know if anyone else has done it, and I know if they have, they've probably done a better job, but I'm going to go ahead and keep working at it. Now, this arc is pretty small, so I'm going to I'm gonna go ahead and just do less. I'm going to do this one. I'm going to narrow it up just a little bit, you see, to try to get it to fit what I need here because I actually need it to go there and then I just won't ink these bottoms because they're going to be too far down. So we'll just ink that top part. I'm going to go right in there this time. Just be bold with our blue. And that's looking weird. This is balmy blue, but it's so speckly. That's funny, isn't it? Is this the one that's working or the one? Yeah, it is. Hmm. It's weird. Kind of turning it green. So I'm going to need to get the other one and do, <laughs> do blue. Because this is like turning it green. I'm mixing in that mango melody with it and it is smoothing it out but it also is turning it green huh fascinating <laughs> thank you for letting me play along here with you but i am gonna try this again but um we're gonna stamp off and we'll <laughs> we'll see what happens let me get those ends off Okay, very interesting. It kind of took some of the color off up there. <laughs> All right, so I hope I'm showing you that you can kind of play and have fun with this, and it's not you're not going to hurt anything. I am going to need to do this one, and we will do this stamped off. 
Let's try it again, stamped off and in the center, because I do want an actual real blue there. There we go. And I'm going to take my little watercolor again. And smooth this in. All right, and lastly, the purple, but this time Highland Heather. It's funny how all each of these, I, I'm trying to make it match, but look how it's not. And it has nothing to do with the water. It has everything to do with the order I stamped. I stamped a lot more pur uh, yellow underneath that pink, or uh, excuse me, more yellow on top of that pink, and it made it much more orangey there. So don't be worried about it. If you're getting something slightly different than you envisioned, it just tell yourself it's better, or at least it's good, because it actually it is. The problem with my DSP when it gets wet is it's buckling. So I would have to press that out. I don't need to stamp off Highland Heather. It's so pale. I'm just going to stamp and stamp and stamp until I get that color about the way I want it. All right, there we go. And that's nice to be able to do that, isn't it? All right, this one's the one that should have been purple. So we're going to go ahead with purple, but we need gorgeous great for that. We're going to do the sentiment again on the top. And we'll see how far. We need to stretch it out pretty far to get it to stay out, get out as far as I want it to, like right there. So cute. Once you put your sentiment on top, doesn't that just really make it perfect? I mean, I love that. It's so cute. And then... Um, we do have the retirement wishes is from our Paradise Palms. So I'm gonna do that in the middle here. Right there. And then that one we'll trim later and get it finished too. I'm gonna set that aside because that, oh, I forgot. I gotta do the ground where the, where the palm trees are going. Okay, so there's the ground from Paradise Palms and Cinnamon Cider. And this is going to, I know these trees are going to have to be pretty close to this edge. So we'll just go like this. I'm going to turn it upside down as well. There, that's good. All right, so that is that one. One more. This is gonna be fun. I'm glad I am get doing this with you because I wanted a bunch of these cards. These are gonna be really nice ones to send out to people. Oh, I got a bunch of catalogs in the mail. Are you getting all of your spring, you know, seed cattle? I'm not buying seeds and plants, but I'm still getting, they, the post office must have notified them of my move because I knew we wouldn't be doing it. I'm not doing that again. But um, the post office has just been sending the information. So I've been getting all of those catalogs. Lots of really good looking ones too, but I'm still, like I said, not really interested. Now I wanted to get some, this is beach, you know. I'm, I'm on this one is wishing you a warm and beachy kind of day, which, which is in the Paradise Palms. Now this is not your typical beach. They do have beaches in Hawaii that are kind of like this where there's, you know, a lot of greenery right up to the water. But I think I'm not going to go with that sentiment with it. This, that would have been a better sentiment on the other one. So let's not do I, that. And then I don't really have to worry about the ground so much. For this one, I took this grass in Paradise Palms and just added some grass to it. 
with probably used just jade, I suspect. Or, oh no, I bet you I used our soft succulent. This is my favorite green right now. All right, so we'll just stick in the grass like all over down here. I'm gonna cut away a lot of this, but there, that's it. You don't need to worry about it too much. Hmm, um, what kind of a, if you were gonna be a mail order model, what kind of a catalog would you be in because that's what I was thinking when we got all of these gardening ones is that if I was a if I was a model I couldn't be a hand model that's for sure my the the I think a hand model must have a very limited lifespan unless you've got like amazingly nice skin and hands I would not be a hand model for sure but um I could maybe show how to use a, a plow or a shovel or something that might not be that might be something I could do I don't know I have never they don't tend to show people in my garden catalogs much maybe a little kid going like this to show the flower and how big it is compared to a hand and they're trying to make it look really big so they use a kid's hand <laughs> you noticed them doing that I'm gonna go ahead and just do a solid pink this time Okay, just solid pink right here in the middle. And then I'm going to go out from it, just not re-inking. I, I am going to get off my mess. I made a big mess here. And that edge that's stark, we'll get rid of that. And inside too. Okay, now we'll do... The outside of it it's not really strong enough so we'll have to let's just do a very light press I'm trying not to get it to be quite so strong there we go much better let's do it again light press stamped off just one time and I'm turning it, so because I'm doing it so many times, I can kind of turn it a little bit, the ends, uh, just to get more kind of going around the outside there where I want it. That actually worked better doing it that way, I think, if you're using a, the same color like I am. Your pay, make it go pale out and just do your stamping off basically right there on the card. And then we're gonna just skip the yellow on this one and go straight to blue. Let's see if that's gonna work, it is. A tractor model, ha, <laughs> that's a good one. You'd be a very nice looking tractor model. Ah, I bet you would sell a lot of tractors. That's a good good choice. Okay, I would like to be, I don't know that I would be a good at it, but I would like to be a candy model. <laughs> that would be nice. I wouldn't mind doing that. Okay, so I'm just kind of stamping off right there. I'm gonna do this. Mm off to the side there there we go i'm gonna go one two oops i got that but it's a good thing i'm planning already to stamp that off i mean to cut that off so i want it a little lighter on the inside there all right very good got our blue now we're going to purple and this one when you're not messing with the yellow goes much faster Okay, we'll go to purple. Um, yeah, I could be a candy model. That sounds good. Any kind of a cookery sort of thing would be fun to do. All right, Highland Heather. Let's start there 
again and again and again, and then work our way out onto the blue. Now see, if you were doing this on white cardstock, this would not work. But because this um, On the Horizon paper already has all this background stuff, it looks great. Um, but it, this, I do not think this method would work at all on like just white. <laughs> I I would do it on scrap if you're if you're thinking of trying it. Michelle, um, an Overeaters Anonymous model. Oh, you are so funny. You would not. <laughs> Actually, I guess all of us probably could do that really well. Cause it's who doesn't overeat? It's just some of us. It's it's more painful. We have a neighbor right across the way who um you know wanted. He's new. He's and he's, you know, wants to get to know the neighbors. And um, and we were kind of in the same boat because uh, we just moved and we haven't had time and haven't taken the time really to get to know anyone. So I said, okay, good. Let's get I'll, well, the people right next to you. Do you know them? No. Okay. Uh, let's do suc succulent for our sentiments on this one. So I said, let's ha get together with them too because they're really fun. You would like to know them and all of that. But I said, you know, I don't really do food anymore. <laughs> I'm trying to get out of it, you know. I don't really do food anymore. So it doesn't have to be about food. It's like, seriously, America, do you have to eat at every stinking event that you do? So um, he's like, oh, with a kind of a weird, sad look. Because he's a for one thing, and he's thin. So I don't know how much he has to worry about his weight. And... Um, when I went to the neighbors and they were like, oh yeah, that'd be great. Well, I love to cook. I'll bring this. And I said, oh, okay, well, good. Because I don't really like to. And I mean, that would be fine. I don't really eat at night. I was kind of thinking maybe we wouldn't do food. Oh no, we have to do food. It's like, oh, sheesh. So <laughs> today again, when I talked to the, we got it for beachy kind of day. I do like that. That's a cute saying. Very fun. All right, put that right there. A little something to brighten your day. Isn't it pretty? Love that rainbow, it's so cute. And then we'll trim it up and, oh, I forgot. I wanna make sure I get the little sun. The, again, the little sun is in your palm trees set. And that's got to be Mango Melody because this is already kind of yellowy right here where it's going to have to go. You can barely see it there, but there it is. All right. So I said, yeah, I don't really eat after 4 o'clock. And he said, oh, my goodness. <laughs> Fuzzy and glitchy. Oh, I, you're right, Michelle. I am. What is it doing? What are you doing, computer? Huh. That is so weird. I've been having a lot of internet issues. I'm gonna have to call my phone company and tell them what is your problem because I don't have to use you. I can use someone else because uh, you're right. Look at that. I'm seeing it and it's terrible. It's a terrible picture. <laughs> now that I touched the screen, it looks like maybe it cleared it up. I don't know, I hope so. I'm not sure. So frustrating. Now, it's not even the end of the month, and I think they are already messing around with my my data. And we haven't used a bunch either. It's not like we use a ton. Okay. Wine, wine, wine. Stop, stop, stop. All right. So now we're going to cut this off. I've got to cut some of it off. I hate cutting any of it off. It's so pretty. If your life was ever made into a television show, would it be a soap opera, a drama, or a sitcom? And what would it be called? We're going to go right really close to that sun. No, we're not. We're going to go down here first and pull off some of that green. Because it's pretty lot of green. I don't need that much green. And if we can try to get down to four and a quarter, but we won't be able to. So let's go to four and a half. Okay, so that'll help a little bit, giving us a little, let's see if we can get to five and a half here. 
I'm gonna cut, there's that spot that I stamped into. We definitely want that off. And then we'll go five. How about just a hair under our five and a half point? This is actually making this a lot smaller than my original, but we'll see if it works. Video frozen, oh my goodness. Well, it's that kind of a day, apparently. So I guess today would be a drama. Probably almost always would be a drama. Although I feel like it's not a drama. Okay, so this is five and a half across. It's just a very, very light border there. That's gonna work quite nicely. Let's just do that. I wanted yellow on the outside of this as well. Okay, so instead of doing my measurements, I'm just eyeballing that edge. This is one way you can use up your scraps more efficiently, is if you just don't worry about your measurements so much and just use what you've got. Okay, now on my screen, my video is not frozen. Um, so Michelle or Linda, that actually might be on your end. I'm, I'm going to just not take responsibility for that one. I don't know if I'm going to be correct in that, but I am. Maybe we're all having video issues. I don't know, but it's happening at night when we're watching TV too, where our, our internet is just acting up. It's not running shows well that used to run just perfectly fine. All right. For a sitcom, good. Good, Michelle. I would like mine to be a sitcom too. <laughs> I would like it to be. I don't know that it always feels like that, but I would like it to be. So here's So Saffron. Let's see how that's going to... Oh, that's going to be nice. So let's grab a whole sheet of that. I keep spinning in my chair to grab it, <laughs> forgetting I don't have my paper behind me anymore. I have to actually get up and get it. Oh, and here, let me grab a piece of Calypso Coral as well. And probably ought to get another piece of Flirty Flamingo too. All right. Calypso Coral. Oh, I mean, so saffron. <laughs> this is so saff. So saff. All right. A comedy like I Love Lucy. Yes, that would be really good, especially if you were the model again in a candy shop. That was such a funny episode. Did you guys ever see the one where she um, put the loving cup on her head and got it stuck on her head? And then <laughs> and then she um, had to get the trophy, uh, this loving cup. She had to get it to the studio where Ricky was going to be, um, a, a, not studio, but whatever the venue was where they were going to give it to the disc. I think it was a disc, uh, not a disc jockey, an actual horse jockey, whatever you call them, jockey. Um, <laughs> and she um, had to wear it on the subway. And of course, because she couldn't see, I don't remember. She put a hat on it. No, <laughs> it was, a, it, actually, I think that is probably one of my most favorite episodes ever. The Her in the subway with that loving cup stuck on her head. It was so funny. <laughs> oh, there's some really good ones. Or the one where she was reading a mystery novel and Ricky thought that she was going to actually try to kill him. That was a really good one, too. I think a whole bunch of comedies tried to do that one. All right, so that's the way this one's going to be. And then we'll put the palm trees on here in a bit. But let's go ahead and this is going to be a little rough here, but oh well. It's going to just have to be. Now for this one, we're going to cut pretty close to the sun. And 
I don't want to cut any off the edge. We're going to have to cut some off here. Let's see. Let's see how wide it is. So this is six inches. So we actually kind of want it to be about four and a half or four and three quarters. So let's go with four and three quarters. Okay, and we'll leave it at six inches there. Mm. Linda said she liked purple, so maybe we'll go with purple on this one. The purple is a little dark, I'm thinking. So I'm either going to go back to my polished pink. Or it is polished. So this is not polished. This is 30 Flamingo, which works too. Not that one. This is what I had it with. And I think maybe Highland Heather would be really nice with this one. Or even Purple Posey. Let's grab those out. Let's see. Mm, not Purple Posey. Do you remember... Our Fresh Freesia. I don't use that one as much just because I keep, kind of forget it's in here. I'm trying to grab a sheet of Highland Heather. Okay, so here's our Highland Heather. Oh, that's kind of pretty. I kind of like that. And this is Fresh Freesia, which I think I'm liking better. Mm, I don't know, that might not be strong enough. Let's do that one. And that one. Uh, no, we'll just do Highland. We'll do Highland Heather for, for now. Jeff and I were watching Leave It to Beaver again, and we forget how funny that show was also. We were watching the episode where um, there, they had new neighbors and Beaver got the idea that the wife, this beautiful wife was attracted to him and, um, he was, in, he was afraid her husband was going to beat him up and it was, it sounds very silly, it, but, and it was, but it was, it was pretty funny. The only thing is, is that in that particular episode, usually Ward and June are pretty good parents and respond well but in this case I don't know we, we thought that when the parents when the when the couple came over to find out what why had Beaver run away and acted so scared <laughs> their response was oops I need that glue was strange because they didn't just tell Beaver knock it off and stop being you know a weirdo your child She's not attracted to you, and he's not um, at all um, threatened by your presence, so just stop. But you wouldn't say it like that, but I'm seriously, that is what you would say, because it's like, come on. Of course, this day and age, unfortunately, kids aren't able to be as innocent as all that to even probably think along those lines. All right, so... That, just make sure that gets smoothed down really good if you add water like I did because that's kind of lumpy there if you don't. All right, so there's that one. And one more. This one's going to be with Dirty Flamingo. It's pretty close. Not quite close enough. All right, our, since our name is crow, we would have to have the word crow in it, so something to crow about. That would be uh, maybe a good title. I'm not very original. Jeff is the one who would come up with a really funny title for it. He said that when he was a kid, he had decided he was going to have a rock band, and it was going to be called Jeff Crow and the Caw Cause. <laughs> which thought, I am so glad I didn't know that about you. <laughs> Did not hear you say that till after I had said, yes, I will marry you. <laughs> that is the silliest thing I've ever heard of. Hey, Jewel, it's good to see you. Coming in late is okay. I see you have a birthday coming up this month. <laughs> I wonder if you like to be reminded about that. Some people just don't. I assume people who don't say anything don't mind. I would hope people who did say something would 
send me a quiet message that said, uh, I don't celebrate my birthday, so would you please stop? That would be good. Always better to know than to keep annoying people. All right, there we go. Now we're ready for our little trees. Now the trees are gonna go pretty fast. This is the background, takes a while. Um, with those little rainbows, but look at those. You saw how sloppy I was when I was doing them, but look at how cute they are. Again, the, the sloppiness works well with this kind of muted, run together kind of background stuff. So that's why I decided to experiment with my rainbows on those first before I did other things and ruin perfectly good cardstock with my scribbles. All right, so I'm just gonna get out a big sheet of white and our Paradise Palms and we're gonna just stamp, stamp, stamp. We're gonna stamp, um, let's look here. We need one, two, three of those, three of the other, and three of these, three of everything. So that should be pretty easy to do and then pretty easy to cut out and stick on. And I just used cinnamon cider for everything. Oh good, it's nice, thank you Jewel. I'm glad that you appreciate it and I know what you mean. Even though, oops, I got some brown there, but since these are all getting cut out, oops, that one didn't work. There, we just are doing three, but they have to be three good ones, don't they? Um, you know, Jeff, uh, Jeff always remembers my birthday, and our kids are pretty good about remembering my birthday now, too. They do need a reminder, generally, somewhere in the week ahead, <laughs> but they do remember. But um, because I make cards, and I've kind of gotten snooty about cards, apparently, I don't get any cards, hardly. Thank you, you guys, for sending me cards. Some of you do, and I do really appreciate it because they're the only ones I get, and they're always really nice ones, too. It's like, whoa, this is one of the really nice things about doing cards is that the people who send you cards are really good at making them. All right, so this one has the stocks already in it. Um, I, what I'm going to do is just ink up the bottom where the trunk is, and then um, I'm just going to take it off of those fronds a little bit. You know, if it doesn't, gets a little brown on the bottom, it's not going to be that big of a deal. Okay, now, so we've done that. Now I'm taking my um, So Saffron, or Soft Succulent. I'm going to be careful here, though, because... I don't want a bunch of brown in my soft succulent. So I'm kind of gingerly doing this. And if it didn't go on perfect, I will use a pen to fix it. So there's one. Let's see how it worked. Pretty good. So that's one. We'll do the soft succulent again here because I can do it a little quicker and easier. It's less of a problem with my brown getting up there, I think. Maybe. We'll see. Two. Ah, that one's pretty brown. Let's do brown again. Let's try to avoid that. By cleaning this off. You can mask it, and um, that is very easy to do, but I'm trying to do three quickly. So I'm not going to bother with the masking. I'll just try to be careful here. If you have those little dauber ink things, I oftentimes use those for things like this. I'll just use my little ink dauber ones. There we go. And we'll cut those out. We do need our little um, our coconut. Our coconuts. Definitely need those. Oh, I need the treetops too. What am I thinking? So let's do my little coconuts. We need a bunch of those. One, two, three, four, five, six. And 
end, then you have two of your palm tree tops. So we'll do those. It looks like my video's gone back to normal again. I don't know. I bet it was my computer doing something weird. One, two, three. Let's do another one. That first one was pretty light in color. In fact, these all are kind of light. Um, I did them uh, before with soft succulent. I'm not as fond of it. It should have probably been a more vivid green, but um, I'm still just sticking with it for now because I, I didn't want to have anything too dark that wasn't really working either. All right, now let me grab my cutting machine, put some of my supplies away that are all over the side here, my inks. We'll put the camera up just a bit, hopefully. Not messing anything up. Now I should have cut these out in advance. That would have been smart, but I didn't. I have old old um, movies makes me think about old music um, you guys probably have you ever done the done the um, name that TV show from the soundtrack you know that plays at the beginning those are always kind of fun see if you can name them because Surprising how many of them you remember. All right. Oh, if what? So do you? Um, what what albums did you have when you were a kid? We had. I I had a um, ones that none of my friends had because my uncle liked to listen to fifties music so. I had an Everly Brothers. Now there's a little doll up here so that your um, your palms can actually fit really nicely right on top of your palm tree. Okay, that one's kind of bent, so I'll try to get it down there so it'll stay better. There we go. I had um. I would have liked to have had a Ricky Nelson. I bet a lot of people had a Ricky Nelson. He was pretty cute. And that the Hot Air Harriet and Ozzy and Harriet show was pretty fun. I always liked him. I, my brother and sister had a Creedence Clearwater one that I really did like. That was a good one. And they also had, um, which is kind of funny, they had, um, do you remember the Partridge family? <laughs> David Cassidy had a song, a hit song with the Partridge family called, I Think I Love You, or something like that. Do you remember that one? My brother and sister had the the. The little, what did they call it when they were the little, what was that, 45, that's what it was called, the little 45 of that song, which is kind of surprising because they were old enough to not probably like that music, but they did, and I was little because I was a lot younger than them, so I love that, that was great. <laughs> And I did have a Donnie and Marie Osmond one. I'm always embarrassed to say that I did, but I did. And I actually really liked some of the, a couple of the songs that they did. Because um, their, their show 
was on Friday night, which being a Seventh-day Adventist, I wasn't allowed to watch, but sometimes I sneaked and watched it once in a great while. So that was part of the thrill of Donnie and Marie, I think. And let's see. I was a classical in girl. I had Bach and I had Beethoven. I mean, seriously, I'm a very dull person. And let's see. Oh, do you remember The Sting? The Sting actually popularized music that I already loved. <laughs> you remember Marvin Hamlish and the um, ragtime stuff that they did from The Sting that was the uh, Scott Joplin music? Oh, man. And so probably I'm not the only person, I bet, who got interested in jazz just from that movie. All right, now you've got your little... Uh, we did all of these, right? I think I did all of those. Now we get our little palm fronds out. Match those up here. Oops, that one goes with this one. The Entertainer, that was one. And um, there were some other ones too. And so I've gotten rid of, got rid of all of our albums a long time ago, and our son took some of them because right at the time I was getting rid of them um, was when our kids were moving out of the house and I was cleaning up, and I decided I don't need these records anymore because our, we don't have a record player, and I'm never going to have a record player in ever again. So our son Joel said, I want them because... He, you know, that was making a comeback right then. Records, LPs. So I thought, good, great, take them, enjoy. He bought a little turntable player, which I thought was hilarious that the younger generation was going back. But there was some novelty and some coolness to that crackly sound, you know, of an LP spinning on the, on the player. So I was glad that somebody was enjoying that. He took quite a few. We had Herb Alpert and <laughs> the Tijuana Brass. We had um, Floyd Kramer. Remember Floyd Kramer? He was a piano guy. That was my mom's music, but I liked it. So when she got rid of that, I took it. But those are all... LPs that I didn't have anymore and so after you know years and years of not hearing them now Joel has been gone out of our household for quite a while I realized I miss some of these songs and I don't hear them on the radio so I have actually downloaded several things from my Apple account stuff that we had on an LP long ago It's just really nice that we can download all of it. And some of it sounds better than it ever did before. Man. Uh, Buddy Holly. Do Buddy Holly music. Here in Springfield, I've discovered there's a really good jazz radio station. Not fusion jazz. Not, to me, weird. I can't understand the music at all, hardly jazz, because it's just so weird. Um, it's... It's like soft, light, light, light jazz. And it's really nice. Okay, I'm sure anybody who's a real jazz lover would think it was like a store, you know, Muzak kind of music. Kind of like the first time my um, my dad, who I didn't live with, but I visited him one time, and he had realized that, you know, strangely enough, Kathy really likes classical music, so um, I will get, I'll show her I'm cultured too, and get some classical music. So he said, I've got this, you know, ba um, Beethoven, you know, album that you'd really like to hear, and I was all excited, I was like, cool. Finally, some cultured music coming here. And um, it was one of those greatest hits kind of um, 
albums that remember where you used to have it advertised on TV is, you know, Sessions Presents <laughs> stuff, and it's usually not great music, so I was pretty snobbish, but actually that stuff wasn't bad. I kind of I learned to appreciate it. Sometimes they took the better parts of a of a, what was a very long, dull piece in many parts of it and took the most exciting part and marketed it to people who didn't know music well enough to sit through the boring parts. All right, here's another question. If your life story was made into a movie, who would play you? Boy, I'm getting pretty old. Who would play me? It'd have to be somebody pretty ancient. And because I've weighed a lot of weight, you know, pounds earlier, it'd have to be somebody who was hefty as well. I'm thinking I would... She's dead now, poor thing. But I'm thinking... Um, Shelly Winters. She was a great actress. She could play anybody, right? She could play anybody and make even somebody dull like me. She could do that and she could make it interesting. She was good. Did you ever see Shelly Winters in, um, there's a Robert Mitchum movie where he's menacing Kids. And I think Shelley Winters actually dies pretty early in that one. But um, she's really good. The brief time she's on screen, she's good. She did quite a few, actually. All right, I am almost done. I know this is time consuming, and I really should have come thought of that through a little bit better. Sandra Bullock. <laughs> you know, she's pretty cute. She's pretty cute. She could play you. Yeah, dude, that would be good. All right, my last palm trees. They're easier to cut out than those little coconuts. You just have to be thinking beach. Beach and summer and fun and waves vacation while you're doing all of this sort of thing. Then it makes it easier. And who would play your best friend? Who would you want to play your husband? I don't know. Now see, I like funny. It'd have to be somebody funny. Jeff's very funny. He's got a dry wit. If I could do, <laughs> if I could have one of the Marx Brothers be Jeff, that'd be great. But they were always really mean to, I'd have to go more like with a Stan Laurel or somebody so that I could survive, my character could survive the experience. Because with the Marx Brothers, they might not. All right, so that is that. And now we can assemble. Now I'm not putting these all on a back because that's just gonna take a lot more time. So we're not gonna do that, but put my things away here. So we're gonna do two, oh, I did two large ones here. Well, let's, I think I did a large one here, but you, you wanna make sure you're not covering up your whole, whole sun. So I might only get one tree on this one. I actually wanted two, but I might only get one. And then one little grouping back here, right up here. And if you get into a jam and it's not working, you can always trim one of these guys off. I don't really want to do that. We'll just put them kind of floating up here. Maybe, no, that won't work. I needed to make it longer. All right, we're gonna move this guy over here instead. And the big one over on this side. There we go, that will work. I 
And you don't need to, these dimensionals will fit quite nicely and you don't need a ton of them. You know, unless you're gonna be giving this to somebody who's gonna be tugging on everything, don't worry about it, it'll be fine. Where's my scissors though? I do need a little bit of that. Oh, that was loud. A little bit for my trunk. That was very loud. Oh, the cardstock. Michelle, did you hear that cardstock is going to be on sale? Are you talking about the retired stuff? Because when the retired stuff will go on, it'll start going on sale, I think, pretty soon, right? Because they don't they put it on sale before they name the in colors? They start to tease us with all kinds of uh, hints about what the new in colors might be. And it seems like it's right around then. And so it's got to be after on tour. On tour is where they're going to tell them what the in colors are going to be. When's that? It's going to be interesting to see since they're doing it. Uh, it's virtual and all that. And they're spreading it out over a whole couple of months, I think. Um, Wonder if the if they're gonna release the in color colors earlier than they normally do. But you know people will blab it as soon as <laughs> as somebody knows. All right. One nice thing about these palm branches or the trunks is that that is the perfect size for your little mini dimensional right there. Okay, they've got just make sure you get the bigger the bigger of the two. I'm you know thinking is there was there not one gardening <laughs> fiend actress out there? I can't think of one, but that would be who I would want to have playing me. Somebody who liked gardens. Ah, palm tree, you're not cooperating with my words. I'm going to have to stick you like that. And then we'll use our handy dandy little... Now, if you do like I did and you just had to stick it on like that, you can do another layer, and I'm going to. I'm just going to do another little layer here. of palm branch. Because I shorted myself a tree anyway. All right, now we'll put a little coconut on there. So cute. We'll tuck him in underneath, partially. Well, he's not really cooperating there. Oh, there we go. All right, very good. So we've got our little palm, palm there. And this one, we want to take the little ones back here. I'm going to just glue those right down because the other ones are going to kind of be up on the top. So we'll just glue these on. So do you, who do you did you like best as a talk show host? And you can't say Johnny Carson because that's too obvious. <laughs> it's like who's your favorite Three Stooge? And you can't say Curly because he's everybody's favorite. So we're gonna put that one there, and then this one's gonna go down here, kind of behind. So let's do this one first, and place our palm branch so that it's kind of up on the sun but not quite so right there will be fine okay uh, Jay Leno is really funny do you remember him 
in the Jimmy Kimmel. See, I'm so old. I, I'm back in the Jay. Jay Leno is somebody that I uh, liked and thought he was very funny, but he wasn't as good as Johnny Carson. Now that, in that, And I stopped at that point. I stopped listening <laughs> to Any Late Night at that point. It's like... Um, a whole lot of things that happen when you get older. You just think, well, I've, I've, I've experienced the best of what there is. So why? All right, we're gonna do it right there, and hope that worked. Yes. Okay, right on. Oops, that was just the top part. So I'm just sticking that right on there. That is not adhering this super solid. So if you wanted it more, you could stick some under there, but you'd have to double it up. You'd have to put two dimensionals and two dimensionals. So I'm just gonna shove that on there and, and assume that's gonna work. And then this one's gonna come out like this. Oh, Harvey Corman. Within a zoo setting, Candy, I want to know your story. <laughs> that sounds so funny. In a zoo. A zoo is a great idea. So since, you know, we're just chatting and pretending anyway, I guess it doesn't even have to be your real story. But maybe, maybe, Andy, you've had a secret life in uh, as a zoo keeper that I did not know about. But Harvey Corman, probably one of my favorite all-time actors and comedians. He's so funny. All right, let's see here. Let's do it like there. Okay. And there. Now, one thing I noticed with my soft succulent, once I got them on here when I had yellow in it too, is it, it kind of just didn't work as well as I would have liked. So I took my uh, lightest so saffron and I just put a little bit of yellow in there just to make those fronds, I don't know, not quite so soft succulenty. So if you, if you are experiencing that issue, you can try that too. And then we put on our little coconuts. The Marx Brothers did a um, movie called Coconuts, if you recall, but I don't really remember what it was all about. Hmm, I don't like where that went. Let's try that again. Some of the coconuts, you know, if you're like me, it they there's the dye I didn't get it placed as well as I would like. I'm gonna trim that off. There we go, that's better. This one I cut out better. Jeff and I we didn't watch Blazing Saddles. We watched um, some of it though. Oh man, one of the funniest movies ever. Okay, there we go. That's that one. And what's left? Oh, our last one. We're almost finished. So this one. Oh yeah, this one I've got my little trees down here. And then we've got a curved one here. I've got an extra curved one. How did that happen? And I don't see my I've got an extra curved one, but no straight one. What did I do? I lost a trunk. I lost a straight trunk somewhere. Okay, we'll stick this guy on first. Now for this one, because I, I like this water. Mm, I did not like all this white around the trunk. And these are really easy to trim up. So if you're a perfectionist, you can trim those up.
Harvey Corman would have been if if uh, I could survive a marriage with Harvey Corman, and I wanted somebody to play Jeff. That would be good. He'd be funny. When he, <laughs> remember I told you, I mentioned the episode where Ricky thought Lucy was trying to kill him. Um, Harvey Corman did a skit with Carol Burnett where he actually was trying to kill her. And it was so funny. I do not remember how it worked out, but it was, I just remember it being hilarious. And um, yeah, that was my late night viewing, actually, stuff like that. So that's why I don't know anything about Jimmy Kimmel. Sorry. You always have wanted to work in a zoo, Andy. You know, it does look really fun. And there's openings <laughs> here in Springfield. I'll just tell you right now, if you ever want to work in a zoo, uh, you could here in Springfield, you could always come live here because Dickerson Park has, and slash zoo is always hiring. And I saw the kids working down there and they would love to have an adult. I guarantee you they were good, but they were yapping and enjoying their job a lot in a way that made me think they would love to have adults working down there for that zoo too. The kids were working the giraffe area mostly. I think that's, they might've been like super, super tame or something. So they were, was less problematic probably having your young summer kids working in the the giraffe area. Are giraffe, are they just normally really placid creatures? Because man, these were like so calm, super calm. And I've never seen them not be, but I haven't seen them a lot because I only have seen them in the zoo. Oh, the Harvey Dentist skit. Oh boy. Now that is so funny because I guarantee you, I do not, I, I think, was that Mr. Tudball who was in that chair, which was, um, <laughs> um, what's his name? Tim Conway. Oh man. And that would have been like stolen right out of the, um, out of the, um, Oh, um, W.C. Fields playbook because they he did that that um, dentist skit that was really funny too. But he again, when you're talking such talent, no one really cares because it's just um, it's it's considered a um, a compliment, you know. For people to take your skits. Oops, those are upside down. Now your coconuts do have a pointy end. And I think those, I don't know, maybe the pointy end actually, that's probably where they're attached, huh? So I bet the pointy end actually goes up. <laughs> I haven't really looked at a coconut tree all that well. So I didn't want another curved one. If I wanted a curved one, I should have done it as a mirrored one and done it like that. I actually need, oh, there it is. There's my straight one. Excellent. I wanted a straight one. This one's going to be up here, but I got to make sure it's going to work. I'll probably have to do the double thing again just to make sure. Harvey Corman was so funny. And um, Lyle Wagner. Oh, there you go. Now, if you wanted somebody who was really handsome to play your husband, <laughs> he's funny. And <laughs> he was really a handsome guy, too. <laughs> Oops, let's get that end off. Wagner. He played a, there's a movie 
a really bad movie that's a mystery science theater one called Catalina Keeper. It's very funny and uh, unintentionally in some places. Very funny. And so we'll put this like way up here as far up as I can get it to be away from my words. Ah, good, that'll work. And yeah, Lyle Wagner plays a, guy, a bad guy in it and he's, it's a straight role, but it's still, he's pretty funny. All right, you have survived what has turned out to be kind of a long, a long one today. It, appreciate your being patient with me and letting me do all of these with you. It was fun. I always enjoy having company when I'm doing it, so thank you. All right, there's our last one. So we've got our nice little paradise all set up there. And our paradise palms. I've got an extra palm tree. I better hang on to that. I'll probably be using it. And I'm going to get rid of all of my scraps here on this side. I've got bunches of them here. Just so that I can... <laughs> I don't whisk it all. If I just leave it, there's so many little teeny tiny pieces like right here on the side. I will, it will just blow off onto the floor in bunches of places. <sighs> that was a big mess. Okay, so we've got those. Oh, what we did today, aren't those cute? I really like those. Very nice. Anyway, thank you so much again for joining me and sticking with me, even though my, oops, my camera acting up again. Why are you? You shouldn't be. There you go. Carmen, it's like a little baby. <laughs> the little baby you're trying to put to bed and it just won't lay down in its crib without waking up again. <laughs> That's what it's like. All right. Thank you for joining me today. Thank you for sharing with me, sharing the video, commenting and liking it. It was nice to see you guys. I hope you guys are warm. It's really warm here. So um, I think we're having great weather again. Anytime it gets cloudy and it's warm though, I always think, ah, oh, I wonder if there's gonna be a tornado. <laughs> so there isn't, as far as I know, there's no tornado. So anyway, I think we're all safe. And um, uh, boy, March is gonna be coming to the end soon. So be ready for all the new stuff that will be coming along. There's a lot of new stuff right now. So if there's anything you want, get in there and get it before it's gone. I had to get my rainbow stamps without the dies because the dies weren't available when I bought this. But I think the dies are back again now. So I think I can get them. That'll be nice. There's some really cute stitched clouds in that set. All right. Thanks a lot, ladies, and enjoy. I will see you I think next week I should be fine. If not, I'll put on a video that I had to record at another time. It's possible, but I think Jeff will be back at school. This is spring break, so the following week he will be back into his routine, and then I can get back into my routine too. <laughs> Thanks a lot. I'll see you later. Bye-bye.